Hello, my name is Carlos Urban and today we're going to review the D500 manual. Uh, I just got this camera but I've been shooting with Nikon for about 10 years. So this is a camera that I just got as a replacement or an upgrade to my D7000 which I still plan to, to use but this is a much better camera. So when you review the manual uh, one of the things that you want to do is go to the things that you really, really care. We're going to focus on things that have to do with taking pictures. For videos, is uh, uh, I would recommend, you know, uh, we'll, we'll go to another video uh, or we'll do another video. So one of the, the first thing that I recommend is that you, um, you know, that you get a um, the electronic version, which you can just Google, if you Google uh, D500, you can just download it from Nikon, and that way you can have it in your in your phone or in your tablet uh, or your computer. So um, the other thing is, so let's go through the table of contents. That's uh, very quickly you know it goes in a very sequential it goes from Nikon's manuals are almost like written by engineers but they usually go from very general to very specific oh the other thing is the reason why I like to use Adobe is because then you can go directly to the specifics so if you want to know uh, once we're in any of these particular things uh, like let's go to the introduction so when we go to, oh well first um, contents uh, very important that you check your contents this cap is very important getting to the habit that when you finish using your camera don't leave the you know the lens on because um, it can uh, ruin this thing if, if you move it too much you know from one side to the other if it's a short lens or a small lens than the 50 millimeter or you know 85 chances it will probably happen anything but the longer zooms you know it could damage uh, this and I've had problems with this if you damage this part of the camera then you're gonna have all sorts of problems like autofocus and so on so you know keep this cap handy then of course you have your battery this is not really that important if you keep it or not your charger uh, I've never used these clips but you know keep them also in a place that you find you can find them easily okay so make sure that you check that you have everything uh, there is also a USB cable the strap and so on okay so let's go to the jump real quick to the introduction the, I, I like to start here because you want to get the first thing you want to do is get familiar with the buttons in your camera okay so um, oh what I, so what I was saying is let's say for example so this is the qual button this one right here so this is the quality of the picture if you want it raw JPEG and so on so let's say I don't know what this means and I click here you see it takes me directly to um, to the page where you have all the different options JPEG NEF is the same thing as raw NEF plus JPEG so you can assign um, you know one slot because you have two slots uh, into raw and the other one is JPEG so this is your quality button I'm gonna go through this relatively quickly okay because the idea is that you can go through the um, through the manual quickly and if there is something specific that you almost never use then you can go to it later so um, so let's keep on going so number two so this button right here this is a release button it's a release button because this ring that is right here the one that this one the release, the release mode we'll see in a moment but this is the one that you can change to the different modes into single or or continuous and so on so so this is a release button it's very good that they put it here because originally you know it would be it, it used to be around here and with my D7000 a lot of times I would move this without noticing so this is good they put it there uh, okay I let for the 
camera strap, so this is just where you put your strap, a white balance button, so this is to change the white balance. Um, I'm going to have a different video where I go through all the different settings and explain the different things. So this is your white ba balance. Uh, number six is the mode. So the mode is if you want to go to aperture priority, manual, uh, P, which is program. So, um, you know, with a cam, this is, this is almost like a pro body. I mean, this is the most advanced um, crop sensor camera. Um, you know the CLR in the market so so you want to get used to get to the semi automatic and manual mode so meaning aperture priority um, and so on uh, here this is your so this button right here uh, number seven this is to change the the, the metering so if you want matrix um, or if you want center weighted or spot metering now the one that is shown right here is the matrix, so that takes an average of the whole exposure. So basically your camera is, is checking the exposure based on what you put here, and we'll go through that later. Number eight, this is if you want to record, so this changes to video. Number nine is your power switch, ten, the shoot or shutter release button. Uh, this is exposure compensation. So if you're shooting in aperture priority, for example, and you want more light, then you put plus, and you can go in thirds, which is a typical way, uh, thirds of a stop. ISO button, so you can, first of all, the ISO, you can go to auto ISO, or you can do the manual ISO, and change the manual ISO. So you'll see later that here, on this wheel, you can change it from auto, to manual and then the wheel here in the back is where you change how much if you have it in manual what do you want the ISO to be. 13 is the control panel so this screen right here is called the control panel because here you can see everything okay. Um, diopter adjuster so what this does is you use eyeglasses like me and, and you don't and you want to set your prescription you know, kind of, you can do it here with the diopter. So if you move this uh, and you have to kind of pull it a little bit and then move it, then, um, you know, you can change it to the different settings. Uh, so this one, focal plane mark. So this is one that I really didn't know what it was. So when I clicked over here, basically it just says that this distance is to determine the distance between the subject and the camera. Um, I don't know what this is useful for, but okay, good. So again, I just wanted to show you that if there is something that you don't know, then you can just go over there. Uh, accessory shoe, so here is where you can put your, your flash. Remember that this camera doesn't have flash, so you need an external flash or speed light. Sometimes it's called speed light. And, um, and you can also put here a microphone and so on. So this is what is called the shoe or accessory shoe. Okay. So let's look a little bit more about the control panel. So the control panel, you have here uh, the exposure more. So this is the one that goes into program, aperture priority, shutter priority, or manual. Uh, then you have uh, your photo shooting menu so this is for menu A okay and you'll see you'll have different menus so here you have the menu A uh, the important thing is um, so le let's go in order this way this right here are the three most important things right so you have uh, the mode so if you're shooting in program mode program mode is like semi-automatic where you can set one of the tools and it sets everything automatically the second one is your shutter speed so this is 125th of a second and this is your aperture okay 5.6 so these are the important things it's set for a matrix so this is the metering a clock indicator clock indicator The clock flashes in the control, the clock has been reset 
Oh, so that if it flashes, it means the clock has been reset. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't know that. I haven't, now that I think about it, I haven't checked the clock. I need to put the, the time correctly. So that's just like, you know, like when you set your computer or your phone or anything, just put the right. So this right here is your card. So you have two card slots, for one for an X XQD card, the second one for an SD card. Uh, this one is very important. A lot of people always ask, what do these numbers mean? I always see this in, in Facebook and a lot of the forums. This gives you an approximation of how many exposures or shots you have left, okay, with your, you know, your remaining shots. So you, you're, you're, you're getting a little nervous because you say, oh my God, this is how many shots you have depending on the card size and the settings, right? So if you're shooting raw, it's going to be a much, much, much bigger file than if you are shooting JPEG. And you'll see that within RAW and JPEG, you have different compressions. So depending on the setting that you have, so this is 2,100 shots left. That's obviously a lot. Uh, AFS, uh, so this is your uh, autofocus. So this is single server. We'll talk about this a little bit in, in a moment. But single server is basically when nothing is moving. Um, okay, so here we have the white balance. Um, interesting. Oh, okay, so the white balance is set for A, which is auto. Uh, and this is your image size, so this is set for uh, normal. Okay, so this is like a JPEG, compressed JPEG, which is an L, this is a low. Okay, so this is basically your main control panel. Now let's go to the to the viewfinder. Okay. Uh, okay, so here is if you're shooting black and white. So that's why it says BW or monochrome. You know, a lot of people call black and white monochrome. AF brackets. Okay, so this is your bracket. So so this is in your screen basically in your viewfinder, not your screen, in your viewfinder you have all of these dots right and these are the focus dots and we'll see in a second that depending what mode you have so if you have single uh, focus you're gonna have one dot that you can basically move if you have group then you have a group of dots if you have auto then it's basically you know looking through all of these dots to see where it's going to focus the problem with auto which we'll talk about in a second in these focus points is that how does the camera know what you want to focus on I mean Typically what it does is it focuses on whatever is the closest. Um, this is the, the crop sensor. So I mean the crop sensor you can set it to 1.3x or 1.5. Okay. So let's see this one. So this would be, this is for if you want it, um, you know, the so it's set for 1.3. I don't know why they set it for 1.3 instead of 1.5. But anyway, usually it should be set to 1.5. 1.3 uh, uh, is this one. 1 1.5 is uh, smaller. So this is interesting. It's 1.3. It's almost like full frame. All right. Uh, pitch indicator. Ah. This, I don't know what it is. So let's, hmm, doesn't say pitch indicator. Is this interesting? It doesn't have a page number. Okay, flicker detection. Uh, this has to do with um, you know the flickering um, this is not something that you need to worry about too much I mean uh, basically is to reduce the effects of flicker I don't know how to explain what flicker is but basically that's what it is okay what's really really important is all this stuff here at the bottom Okay, the stuff here at the bottom is, so here it tells you it's in focus, here it tells you the metering, so you have it here in matrix. Uh, this one it tells you 
if you have the auto exposure uh, locked or not um, the shutter speed icon uh, shutter speed auto focus mode oh my god this is so hard to read I don't know why they did this this way it's terrible oh my god it's really really bad this is your metering you know bracketing exposure compensation plus or minus actually this is for the flash this is exposure for compensation your ISO is set to auto and then here 29 should tell you how many shots you have left and this is if you have the flash on let me see if I missed anything uh, PC mode indicator right because you can have the flash or you can have uh, something else so let's see this tells you how many you see th these manuals are horrible they put the picture on one page and the labels on another so that's why I'm telling you really what everything that is here that is really important see if we have a better um, you know a better image of this the tilting monitor so you know this is something that I only recommend you use if you cannot put it in your face for video is different but I'm talking about for pictures it's important that you know that this is a touch screen so you know it's kind of like your phone where you can uh, do um, and, and I notice that if you double just click it twice then um, um, okay so then attach the camera strap I'm not gonna go over that here but you know here you have to attach the camera oh, this is important so you want to put this adapter on your on your charger so that you can plug it to your um, to your wall and charge the battery insert the memory cards okay so this button is very very important you'll see that your lenses have a dot and then there is a dot here you see this little dot and that dot you have to put them so they are aligned and then you turn it and when it clicks you see when you rotate it and it clicks that means it's on and then to detach it you have this button here okay uh, camera setup okay so this is uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on Snapbridge my recommendation is first thing that you do is download it from the App Store okay and then in your camera and we'll go through quickly through the in the settings you can you need to put it either on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth once you do that it will recognize your camera it will tell you a pairing code so you can put it and, and that's basically it uh, so this is what I was telling you before that if you, you pull it and you move it then your viewfinder well this is for yeah your viewfinder will be in focus or not in focus depending on the prescription I use my camera with my eyeglasses on so I don't need to, to change this uh, other thing that is important is that you have this thing right next to the viewfinder when you click it here you can close it so that if you're taking a picture at night you see so you close it you just click it here and it closes and it opens okay uh, again I'm gonna do another video where I'm gonna go through all the settings with a physical camera in my hand so this is I'm gonna do a different video for all the different settings so this I'm just gonna do very very quickly so in the setup menu you have all the you know the basic settings most important one is format your memory card so you can format your memory card from here or if you go to over here and you press this button you'll see that it's like in red you press that button and this one you can format it but again I what I do is I have a quick menu 
which I'll show in the other video and in the quick menu that's where I have my uh, format cards but again if you go to setup it's usually the first one language that's something that you only have to do once I don't touch monitor brightness or any of this stuff uh, information display I leave that uh, on touch so here on outside you have other menu controls okay so whenever you change you have your OK this is kind of your enter button or this one on the right hand side oh my god these drawings are so terrible this is for help so you see this question mark when you're going through the menus and you see this thing over here you click that and it explains to you what it is uh, basic photography so this is an important indicator that we didn't talk about basically tells you how many how much battery you have left I usually whenever I go to take pictures I usually take uh, an extra battery charge so, and I have it in my back or if you have a vertical grip then you can have it in your vertical grip point and shoot photography okay so this right here this button is so that you can view your pictures and uh, I'll show in the again the video that I'm gonna do with the settings but basically this right here okay this when you up or down then you can have the different information about your your pictures let me see if I can do something here trying to what I'm trying to do what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to open the menu again well here you'll see how to so you go uh, D 500 manual right make sure you download it from the Nikon page okay manual English click here what I'm trying to do is I want to have on one side the camera okay so let me see This is what I want. So I apologize as I wasted a little bit of your time. By the way, if you have a PC, you just do the Windows thing and you click the right arrow and, and basically it opens your right arrow. So what I like to do is I'm going to have here, that way I can show you where in the camera. Isn't it amazing that you have to go through all of these pages just to get to here? <laughs> so this is what I wanted. Okay. Uh, so point and shoot photography. Um, okay. So let's see what else we have here. Okay. So here, this when you press. So here on the right, when you press this halfway, that tells you if it's in focus. When you have 
these two like this in your viewfinder, that means that it's in focus. Now, if you have it in out of focus, that's going to happen automatically. But if you're focusing manually, then you know if your uh, subject is in focus or not. So again, sorry, this means that it's in focus. It has the, the little dot. This is not in focus, not in focus. And here it basically says that it cannot focus. By the way, this can happen if it's very, very dark. So there are, there are situations where it's very difficult to focus. You may That's why some people, when it's very dark, you may want to have a flashlight, and that way you focus, pre-focus first, and then you can take your picture. Okay, so the timer. So this is the timer function. Again, let me... So one of the settings that you can put here is timer. And when you put the timer, you can basically have different different options for the timer. Um, I sometimes use it like if I'm doing a selfie or if I'm shooting a picture where I want to be on. So this is just uh, the timer function. Uh, okay, so we were doing this. So viewing your pictures. So viewing your pictures, you're going to press this button here. Let me put this a little bigger. So you're going to press this button and what I was saying is that to get this information you press this button but here this you can click left top uh, to the top to the right to the bottom you click to the bottom okay and then in the middle this is the enter you click to the bottom and you have all these different menus uh, image review deleting or the wanted picture so just press this here the, the trash the trash button. Let me see if I can put this a little bigger. I see that this I cannot put smaller. Maybe we can just close this. Okay. I mean, I could pause the video, but again, if I'm doing something really quick. So again, you press this trash button and it you know, confirms that you want to delete it. You say yes, then you click yes. This right here is the live view. Live view, when you press this button, is that you're, you're going to be using this, right? You're going to be using your screen. And you can use it to take pictures or to take videos. Again, uh, the way that you usually focus is you press your button uh, halfway. So again, from the view from the top, right? This is your shooting button. So if you press it halfway, that's how you focus. If you want to exit live view, you click on the button again. Again, live view is basically using this monitor here. I'm not reading this because this is really details that are not very important. Again, the idea is to go through the manual relatively quickly so that you know all the most important functions to use. So this is very important, this button right here, okay? This button right here, you have AF and you have M. AF means that it's on autofocus, M means that it's on manual. Now, the most important thing that people don't realize is that if you press this button, okay, you can see it here, or you can see here, you press that button and you move this wheel or the one in the back and you can change to the different autofocus uh, the different autofocus modes okay and you basically have two major modes okay which is the AFS they call it single circle basically is whenever it has S which is the single okay is for stationary subjects A AF full servo or C which is continuous I don't know why they put F here 
is is the one that is when it's moving. What is the difference? Well, what what will happen in the continuous mode is that it will continue focusing when you have when you're pressing on this the halfway around. So you you'll see. Um, you know, I'm, I'm actually going to do a whole video on autofocus. I have one already, but uh, this is usually the trickiest part. I suggest that if you're taking um, stationary, you start with AFS, okay? This is if you're using your... Um, so whenever you're taking pictures with a viewfinder, it's very different than when you're taking with a screen. And this is one of the things that makes it confusing. If you're using the live view, then you have all these other modes, but this is only in live view. I suggest that you do not use the live view to take pictures, unless you're doing a macro, and I have a video where you can see the technique to do macro, uh, or if you cannot, you know, if you have put it on the floor or something like that. If you do that, then you have different uh, autofocus modes. Uh, you actually have one that even recognizes if there is a face. So, um, again, my recommendation is that you only use this for movies, or mainly for movies. Okay. So this, we already went over this manual focus using, okay, this button here, the I, is an information button and basically, you know, it gives you all the different uh, information, different information that you need, okay? So this is active delighting, I'm not going to talk about this now, this is, by the way, I don't use any of this stuff, I like to have full control of my camera. Active delighting is something that your camera acts, you know, adds light, but I don't want it to add light. I want to have full control. What I see is what I take pictures of. So I'm not a big fan of this type of thing. So this is, again, the display if you want to change. This is all in live view. So this is the other thing. So live view, um, I'm going to spend, uh, because we already have 32 minutes, spend the time going through the viewfinder. Okay, so touch screen. Movies, I'm not doing movies in this video. Movies requires a whole different video. We already talked about I. Yeah, this is all in live view. Uh, the frame size. Display information, we already talked about this. Here you have all the display information when you're taking the picture. So this is a virtual horizon, okay, so it tells you if it's straight. This is again if you're looking through the viewfinder, but the most important things are these three things. Your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. This is really the most important stuff. Cropping, you know, again, I have it in 1.5. I don't know why anybody would use 1.3, but that's fine. Uh, taking photos in movie mode. A lot of time lapse. Time lapse is something that is good to try it. It's very self-explanatory. I don't think you really need to go through a manual. Just go to time lapse in your shooting menu, put it on, follow the different, uh, you know, the menu and then see if if you like it. If not, you can change it. So it basically is how many, uh, I want to take a picture every three seconds, every five seconds. I have a video also on, on you know, on, on uh, time lapse, nothing special. Photograph, viewing movies. See, this is the problem with this manual, that basically it has so much stuff that if you want to take a picture, is, is like image recording option. So we haven't even gotten to the main menu. And the main menu, for for now, uh, you know what, it's 35 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna have a whole video going through everything in the menu. I think that I have gone through the most important stuff in the manual so far. Let me see. 
focus log, manual focus, release, we already talked about that. So this is basically, because what happened is, if you remember in the first five minutes of the video, I went over all the different functions. Let me just see something. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to do another video on the settings, but at least this gives you a really good bracketing. So this is something that also we'll talk about bracketing is if you want um, you know different exposures so that then you can merge it and do a um, you know merge the pictures with the different exposures a white balance you can do different types of bracketing you can do exposure you can do uh, different white balances so this is important different types of white balance I usually have it in direct sunlight okay uh, some people like to have it in auto. The reason why I don't have it in auto is because then every picture is going to have a different uh, white balance. Okay, so um, I rather I shoot raw. I leave it in in direct sunlight, and then I change in Lightroom to the white balance that I like. Uh, but you're more than welcome to use auto. Auto works really well. This is if you want to fine tune the white balance again a lot of stuff on just making small changes to your camera so th if you're shooting JPEG these are the different types of picture control modes okay uh, by the way if you shoot raw I recommend you put it in neutral because then what you're gonna see in the screen is going to be again without any uh, processing by the camera is going to be what it looks like as if it were raw or the closest to raw this is if you want to change again this is the when you're in the viewfinder this tells you if it's exposed correctly or not so if you have you want to have it here in zero this is a little bit overexposed a little bit underexposed okay So this is the menus. Again, I'm going to do a whole video just on the menus. Flash photography, that's a whole different area. I have a whole video on flash. So this, um, you don't really need to do anything much in the camera. You can do it all in the, in the flash. Basically, you want to have it on TTL. Flash is one of the things that you really want the flash to do in the, all the settings. Unless you're shooting with a, you know, like in studio and you're using a, a, um, a meter, then that's a whole different, uh, that's a whole different world. You will see that I have a lot of videos on using speed lights because that's kind of my, flash and speed light is the same thing. The reason why it's called speed light is because you can shoot in very high speeds, uh, shutter speeds, and it does hypersync and all that good stuff that if you don't know what it means, it doesn't matter that much. Play on playback. Okay, so this is important. When you do the playback, okay, you can have it on different again you move this thing and you can have different things to show you in the settings you can tell look I want to show everything I want all the histogram uh, all the information about the picture uh, typically what I do is I just want to see if it's in focus so it shows me that that red dot and um, and I have what is called the blinkies if it's like clicking then it shows that um, that the highlights or you know that is overexposed and the basic histogram because the histogram is really what tells you if something has the right exposure or not when it's touching here that means that is underexposed okay or most of it here again I'm not gonna go through how to interpret a histogram because that's something that you can do with a whole video but if you have most of it to the right then you're way overexposed so this is all the whites that's why it's clicking here 
this is all the blacks, most of it is blacks, this is correctly exposed because you have a balance. You have blacks, you have grays, you have whites. So you have, basically that's how the histogram works. Ideally you want something, you know, to be touching a little bit here and to be touching a little bit here. That's the ideal. A lot of people think that it needs to be like a uniform no. It's how much is to the right or how much is to the left. And depending on the picture, obviously if the picture is all black, then everything's going to be to the, sorry, to the left. Protecting, okay, so you can, if you don't want to, by mistake, uh, erase the picture, you can click this, and this is kind of, you know, it's like a key, so it locks that picture so that you don't erase it by mistake. Again, I'm going to do a video on all of the, you know, the settings and the functions uh, because it, that alone can take me like an hour. Uh, so this is just to quickly go through the most important stuff in the manual and I think we have covered pretty much everything. What you will see is, uh, again, if any of these, you don't remember what it is, you can just click here and it takes you directly to that page. And learn to use also, you know, you have your index. So let's say you're like, what is this metering thing again, which I don't remember. Uh, so you go here, you go to You have a different metering. So this is matrix, so it's an average of everything, center weighted. So that means is based on you know the middle. This is spot, okay, uh, which is based on where you have that dot. And highlighted weighted is new. I've never heard of this. Camera sign is the great the greatest way to the highlights. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So this is a new thing. They always come up with new things. But these are the three basic ones. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, um, the idea is to go quickly through the manual. It took 42 minutes, so it took a lot longer than what I wanted. Uh, 